Good evening and welcome to DC Network. I am Tingnay Tim Ho Kip bringing you today's news. Today's top headlines include KSO General Headquarters refutes allegations, clarifies and local keyword commemoration get was not burned. Government grants classical language status to five more languages. IMD forecasts very heavy to heavy rainfall over parts of Northeast and South India. News in details. The Cookie Students Organization General Headquarters is compelled to set the record straight regarding the recent allegations circulating in media and TV discussions, the Anglo Cookie War 1917 to 1919, centenary commemoration get at Laysang, Churachanpur, was not born. The claim that it was born is a rumor of false propaganda spread on May 3, 2023 by the Cookie to ignite the current ethnic conflict. This allegation is totally false and represents an attempt to demonize the Kukizo community. To understand the genesis of the current conflict, it is important to note that prior to the Atsum's call for a tribal solidarity march on May 3, 2023, against the majority Meite demands for ST status, a conspiracy was hatched by a radical Meite organization called Meite Lipun to derail the proposed rally. Maite Lipun called for a statewide ban on May 2 and 3 to counter the rally. Starting from May 2, 2023, tribal commuters, especially from the Kuki community, were harassed on highways by Maite Lipun volunteers. Tribals from valley districts who travel to their respective home districts in the hills to participate in the proposed rally were sent back or harassed in various forms. There was a prior incident involving Maite Lipun shutting down the Atsum office in Infault opposing Atsum's democratic demands to the state government. Finally, on May 4, 2023, the Atsum office was vandalized by the same group. On May 3, 2023, after the tribal solidarity march rallies from Churachanpur who returned home were confronted by Meite youths, allegedly affiliated with Meite Lipun in the Kangbai area, bordering Churachanpur and Bisnupur Valley District. Moreover, the Anglo Kuki War 1917 to 1919 centenary commemoration get at Laysang was indeed burned using old tires. While the Kuki community did not claim that the get was reduced to ashes, some Meite miscreants attempted to raise it to the ground and had started burning the get using old tires. The perpetrators understood well that the get is held there by the Kuki people and burning it would definitely provoke the community. When the get's pillar was set on fire with old tires, local Meite TV news reporters were also present at the scene. The timely intervention of youths at the site extinguished the fire and the get remains intact and standing tall to serve its purpose. Prior to the conflict, the Meite community had continuously pressured the state government to remove or dismantle the get and any objects inscribed with Anglo Kuki were 1917 to 1919 for regions best known to them. Intolerance towards others' history and identity is one of the factors that have contributed to this situation. The District Non-Communicable Diseases and CD Cell organized a joint observation of War Heart Day 2024 and International Day of All Persons at 10.30 a.m. today at the Medical Superintendent's Conference Hall District Hospital. Dr. Hang Sing Tang Luom Lal, DNO and CD, delivered the keynote address highlighting ways to prevent heart disease and measures to care for the elderly. Participating dignitaries included Dr. Van Lal Kungi, CMO Churachanpur, Dr. Ting Lon Lei, Tang Loi, Medical Superintendent, District Hospital, and Dr. NG Senboy Vaipei, Deputy MS K. Lam Sang Lian, DPM NHM, also attended the event. Free health checkups and ECG tests were provided to participants at the NCD clinic. Free health checkups and ECG tests were provided to participants at the NCD clinic. Dr. Hang Sing Tang Lom Lal stated that heart attacks are primarily caused by hypertension and blockages in the heart. He emphasized the importance of maintaining a healthy lifestyle to prevent heart disease. 
Additionally, Dr. Hang Sing Tang Lom Lal advised walking regularly and maintaining a healthy diet can help prevent heart disease. Older adults should pri prioritize their health and avoid excessive salt and sugar consumption. Dr. Ting Lon Lei Tang Loi emphasized the significance of respecting and caring for the elderly, citing bi biblical teachings. Dr. Ng Sen Boy Vai Pei highlighted the alarming rise in deaths due to heart disease among older adults and stressed the needs for stress management and a balanced lifestyle. Dr. T. Van Lal Kung Yi encouraged participants to show compassion and empathy towards older persons citing biblical teachings. The event concluded with a call to promote healthy living and care for the elderly. The event aimed to raise awareness about heart health, promote healthy aging, and emphasize the importance of caring for older persons. Cookie Students Organization Churachanpur announces special coaching for students appearing in JNVST Class 6 Entrance Test 2025. The organization is providing this coaching to support underprivileged students and elevate the financial burden on parents. Registration details are provided as follow. Registration form is available at KSO Administrative Office, KSO Complex Tribu. Registration period starts from 4th of October to 8th of October 2024 and inter interested persons may kindly visit the KSO Complex Tribu during their office timing 11am to 4pm. Limited is available, therefore, first come first serve basis will be applied. For further details, interested persons may contact the given numbers 6009397971 or 87873904455. The Cookie Students Organization aims to support students from economically disadvantaged backgrounds and help them prepare for the JNVST Classics and Trends Test. Today, the District Health Society, National Health Mission, Turachanpur launched the second round of National Dewarming Day 2024 at Turachanpur Higher Secondary School, Lamka. Participating dignitaries include Dr. T. Van Lal Kungi, Chief Medical Officer, Turachanpur, Dr. Kim Naiklam, District Leprosy Officer, Turachanpur, Huai Sianbung, District Call Chain Manager and Dr. Jaire Pudaite, District Nodal Officer, Child Health respectively. Dr. T. Van Lal Kungi inaugurated the event and emphasized the importance of dewarming. She stated that warm infestations can lead to malnutrition, anemia, and impaired cognitive function. Dewarming is essential for maintaining good health. She advised everyone to avoid consuming contaminated food and water. Keep surroundings clean and wash hands regularly and cook food properly to prevent warm infestations. Dr. Kim Neklam shared her personal experience and highlighted the benefits of deworming. She said that she has seen many cases of warm infestations leading to health complications. Deworming is crucial to, for preventing such issues. Joseph Mate, headmaster of Churachanpur Government Higher Secondary School, thanked the District Health Society for choosing their school for the event. He assured, we will cooperate fully and ensure our students benefit from these initiatives. K. Lam Sang Lian, District Program Manager, Churachanpur, also attended the event. It may be highlighted that National Dewarming Day is a biannual program launched nationwide. This year, targets in Manipur is 9,530 children with 1,5594 targeted in Churachanpur District. Dewarming tablets Albendazole 400 mg will be administered to ch children aged 1 to 19 years. Distribution will occur through government schools, aided schools, ADC schools, CBSC affiliated schools, private schools, and higher secondary schools. Children aged 1 to 2 years will receive half a tablet, while those aged 1 to 5 years will receive one full tablet. Thereby, it will reduce your uh, concentration capacity. You, you will be uh, weak in your studies and get everything in your developmental career. So my last request to you is maintain your personal hygiene, wash your hands regularly before and after eating, before and uh, after going to washrooms, daily take bath, trim your nails. So uh, keeping in mind, actually we are very fortunate nowadays. During our times when we were school days, 
this type of program was not there. So I think that you all are, you all are very fortunate that the government has taken up all this for your improvement, for your better performance in your career. The event aimed to raise awareness about the warming and promote healthy habits among children. Mention may be met that National Dewarming Day is a government initiative aimed at controlling and eliminating intestinal worm infections among children. Five Indian languages were granted classical language status on Thursday by the center, which also stated that the government is working to preserve their rich heritage. Today, five languages, Marathi, Pali, Prakrit, Assamese, and Bengali, have been approved as classical languages. Union Minister Aswini Vaisno said at an event. Some of these languages have been fighting for classical languages status for a decade. The Maharashtra government proposed the recognition of Marathi in 2013. In 2014, Prit Viras Chavan, the former chief minister of Maharashtra, formed a committee of language experts to evaluate the language. The center received the panel's report, which verified that Marathi met all the requirements for being recognized as a classical language. Six languages, including Tamil 2004, Sanskrit 2005, Kannada 2008, Telugu 2008, Malayalam 2013, and Odia 2014, are already holding the title of classical in India. All the classical languages are listed under the eighth schedule of the constitution. The term Indian classical languages or Semoji refers to a group of languages that have a long history and a rich, unique, and distinctive literacy legacy. 11 languages are recognized as the classical languages of India by the Republic of India. The Indian government announced in 2004 that languages might hold the title of classical language of India if they fulfill a number of certain requirements. It was established by the Linguistic Experts Committee and the Ministry of Culture. The Indian government established a committee to examine requests for the designation of certain languages as classical. India Meteorological Department IMD has forecast very heavy rainfall over parts of northeast and south India today. The IMD said Assam, Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Sub Himalayan West Bengal, and Sikkim are expected to witness very, he very heavy rainfall today, followed by heavy rainfall over the next two days. Heavy rainfall is likely to occur over Kerala, Tamil Nadu, South Interior Karnataka, Rayal, Sima, and Gangetic West Bengal. Ten liberals died in a collision between a tractor, tra trailer, and a truck in Uttar Pradesh, Mirjapur, late last night. Three others were critically injured in the accident that occurred near Kachua Boulder. The tractor trailer was carrying 13 liberals towards Varanasi when a truck lost control and hit it from behind, police said. Around 1 a.m., we got the information that an accident has happened on Kachwa Boulder GT Road. A tractor with 13 people was heading towards Varanasi when it was hit by a truck. 10 of the 13 people died on the spot, said Abhinandan Kumar Singh, Superintendent of Police, Mirjapur. The injured are being treated at the Ban Banaras Hindu University Trauma Center. The 13 Daily West Liberals were returning home after work in Badohi district. They were headed to their village Mirza Murat in Varanasi, Sait Singh. The dead bodies have been sent to the mortuary and an FIR is being registered, he added. Calling it a painful incident, Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his condolences to the bereaved families of road accident victims. He added, Along with this, I wish for the speedy recovery of all the injured. Under the supervision of the state government, the local administration is engaged in helping the victims in every possible way. Anupriya Patel, Union Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, expressed grief over the unfortunate incident in the Mirzapur district of Uttar Pradesh. Patel wished for the speedy recovery of those injured in the accident. A family of four, including a school teacher, his wife and two daughters, aged five and two, were shot dead at their rented house in Ameti district of Uttar Pradesh on Thursday, police said. 
The incident took place at the Bhavani Nagar Rang Ebao in the city. The victims have been identified as 35-year-old Sunil Kumar, his wife Punam Bharti, and their two minor daughters Ladu, 5, and Sristi, 2. All four were rushed to the hospital where they were declared dead on arrival. Notably, Sunil's wife Punam had filed a harassment and threat to life complaint against Chandan Verma, a resident of Ray Bareli, the police said. The case was registered under the SCST Prevention of Atrocities Act. Chief Minister Yogi Adiyanath has taken note of the incident and assured strict action against the culprits. The incident that happened in Ameti district today is highly condemnable and unforgivable. My condolences are with the bereaved family. The UP government stands with the victim's family in this hour of grief. The culprits of this incident will not be spared at any cost. Strict legal action will be taken against them, the Chief Minister said in a post on X. The motive behind the incidents is being investigated, police said, adding that prima facie the incident does not appear to be a case of robbery. A non person entered the home and shot dead the teacher, his wife and his two daughters, aged five and two. It does not appear to be a case of robbery. The school teacher had filed a case again, Som Chandan Verma around August 18 in connection with commission of offenses under the SCST Act. We are investigating if that is a possible reason for this, a Methi superintendent of police, Anup Singh said. The deceased Sunil Kumar was appointed a teacher in 2020 and served with the Uttar Pradesh police prior to his appointment. BSP leader and former UP chief minister Maya Wati said that the murder of four members of a Dalit family was sad and worrying. The government should take strict action against the culprits and the policemen there saw that the criminals do not remain fearless, she said. Congress leader and former MAT MP Rahul Gandhi also dealt MP Kisori Lal Sarma and spoke to him about the brutal incident, news reports said on Friday. Union Cabinet has approved the Pradhan Mantri Rastriya Krishi Vikas Yozana PMRKVY to promote sustainable agriculture and the Krishonati Yozana KY to achieve food security for agriculture self-sufficiency. The PMRKVY and Krishonati Yozana will be implemented with a total proposed expenditure of over 1 lakh crore rupees. This includes over 57,000 crore rupees for PMRKVY and 44,246 crore for Krishnon Nati Yozana. The proposal of the Department of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare was approved for rationalization of all centrally sponsored schemes operating under this ministry into these two umbrella schemes. Briefing media in New Delhi, Union Minister of Information and Broadcasting, Aswini Vaisno, said the decisions taken in the cabinet meeting related to increasing farmers' incoming income and ensuring food security for the middle class people. He said the two pillars for this are PM Rastra Krishi Vikas Yodana and Krishon Nati Yodana. Vice now expressed confidence that the income of farmers will rise after these measures. The rationalization of various schemes has been undertaken to avoid duplication, ensure convergence and provide flexibility to states and state governments will also be able to draw a comprehensive strategic plan suiting their requirements for the agriculture sector. The PMRKVY comprises of the schemes including soil health management, rain fed area development, agroforestry, paramparagat, Krisi Vikas Yojana and Pardop More Crop. Iran has an execution list of Israeli ter terrorists, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, as well as the commanders of the Israel's Army, Navy and Air Force, according to a poster circulated on X, one version of which was shared by Revenge is near. Neither government has yet responded to this poster so far, although whispers from within Iranian military intelligence suggest senior Israeli leaders, if not Netanyahu himself, may be targeted. Other high-ranking military leaders on the list are Chief of General Staff Harji Halevi and his deputy Amir Baram and the heads of the Northern, Southern and Central Command, Major Generals Ori Gordon 
Yehuda Fox and Eliezer Toledani. Military intelligence chief Aharon Haliva is also named. If the list is genuine, it would appear that Iran targeting Benjamin Netanyahu is a direct response to reports that Israel is looking to press its advantage after crippling the leader leadership structure of Iran backed Hezbollah by executing Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, that country's supreme leader. And if genuine, it mirrors list released by Israel last month that stated it had eliminated top commanders of the Hezbollah's elite Ratwan force, the Times of Israel reported. Israeli forces named 11 Hezbollah commanders killed and shared a poster on Instagram of the broken command structure. In the aftermath of the attack Tuesday, Netanyahu told Iran it had made a big mistake. Targeting Defense Minister Galan would also be a significant move. In October last year, ordering a complete blockade on the Gaza Strip that left millions of civilians starving before Israeli fighter jets merciless bombing, Galan infamously described Palestinians as animals and eliminating the rough of senior Israeli military leaders will be seen as payback for Tel Aviv killing at least eight top Hezbollah leaders, as well as those from Palestinian terror group, Hamas and other associated Islamic groups. Tension between Tel Aviv and Tehran escalated sharply, as have fears of an all-out war in West Asia after Tuesday's large-scale missile offensive, the second against Israel in seven months. The first, in which around 200 ballistic missile and explosive drones were fired at Israel in April, was in retaliation for an airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus in Syria. Tuesday's missile strike, Iran has said, was its response to Israel's killing Friday of Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah and Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh. Nasrallah 64 was killed in airstrikes targeting dozens of sites that Tel Aviv claims were linked to the Hezbollah in eastern and southern Lebanon. A truck carrying migrants from India, Pakistan, Nepal and several other countries was fired upon by Mexican soldiers near the Guatemala border, resulting in the deaths of six migrants, Mexico Defense Department reported on Wednesday. The soldiers claim hearing gunfire as the truck and two other vehicles approached their position late Monday in Siafas, near Huizla. Two soldiers fired on the truck and four migrants were found at the scene and 12 others were injured. Two of the injured later died and the condition of the other 10 remains unclear, the Associated Press. The department did not specify whether the migrants died from the gunfire or if any weapons were found in the truck. 17 other migrants in the vehicle were unharmed, making the total number of migrants 33. The area is a known smuggling road where migrants are frequently packed into overcrowded freight trucks. The department stated that the two soldiers who fired their weapons have been relieved of duty while investigations are ongoing. In Mexico, incidents involving civilians can lead to civilian prosecution, but soldiers may also be subject to military courts martial for such offenses. This incident is not the first occurrence of Mexican forces opening fire on vehicles carrying migrants in the area, which is often the site of turf wars between rival drug cartels. In 2021, the quasi-military National Guard fired on a pickup truck carrying migrants in the same region, resulting in one dead and four injuries. Irinio Musica, a migrant right activist who often accompanies caravans in Saifas, expressed skepticism that the migrants or their smuggler fired at the soldiers. It is really impossible that these people would have been shooting at the army, Muzika stated. Most of the time, they get through by paying bribes. If the death resulted from army fire, as seems likely, it could pose a significant embarrassment for newly inaugurated President Claudia St. Bond, who took office on Tuesday. Though the events took place just hours before St. Bomb officially becoming president at midnight on Monday, she has continued the approach of former president Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador by granting the armed forces significant powers in law enforcement as well as in the state-run companies, airports, trains, and construction projects. Israel Defense Forces, IDF, and Israel Securities Authority, ISA, have announced that they had eliminated the head of the Hamas government in Gaza, Rohi Mustaha, and two other portfolio holders in an airstrike three months ago. 
in a joint IDF and ISS strike in the Gaza Strip. The following terrorists were eliminated. Rohi Mustaha, the head of the Hamas government in the Gaza Strip, Sameh Al Siraz, who held the security portfolio on Hamas Political Bureau and Hamas Liberal Com Committee, and Sami Ode, commander of Hamas General Security Mechanism, they state in a statement amid the ongoing crisis in the Middle East, further fanned by the escalating conflict between Iran and Israel. They say, during a precise IDF and ISA intelligence best strike, IAF fighter jets struck and eliminated the terrorists while they were hiding in a fortified and equipped underground compound in the northern Gaza Strip. The Israeli army has been targeting the leaders of Iran-backed groups Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon since October 7, 2023, when Hamas terrorists attacked Israel. The compound serve as a Hamas command and control center and enable senior operatives to remain inside of it for extended periods of time. The compound was managed by senior members of Hamas general Secu security mechanism and functioned as a hideout for the Hamas leadership led by Mustaha. The Israeli military said, following the strike on the compound and the elimination of the terrorists, Hamas did not announce their death to prevent the loss of morale and functioning of its terror operatives. Hindu group states protest in Bangladesh, Chittagong on Thursday, demanding that the Muhammad Yunus-led interim government address their eight-point agenda regarding increased violence and persecution against the minority Hindu community. Protesters voiced their right to safety and called for an end to the ongoing torture, killing, attacks on temples, and vandalism of idols. We will continue to protest and hold marches across Bangladesh until our demands are met, said a spokesperson from the Minority Rights Movement, which organized the demonstrations. The minority Hindu people, population faced vandalism of their businesses and properties and destruction of temples during the student-led violence that erupted following the ouster of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. In August, thousands of Hindu states protested in Dhaka and the no northeastern port city of Chattogram, demanding protection. Durga Puja will be celebrated in Bangladesh from October 9 to 13. CNN News 18 earlier reported that Hindu groups have also faced restrictions including being asked to stop music during Muslim prayer times. They have also highlighted that specially met idols or Durga Puja have been destroyed with demands for 500,000 taka to facilitate the festival. Amid concern over possible unrest during the festival, Bangladesh interim government earlier on Tuesday said that it will take whatever measures required to peacefully hold the celebrations. The Durga Puja celebration of this time will be the best one compared to all the previous celebrations. We will take whatever measures are required to peacefully hold the festival. Home Advisor Lieutenant General retired Muhammad Jahangir Alam Chaudhuri was quoted as saying by the state-run BSS News Agency. Last week, Dhaka Metropolitan Police Commissioner Mohammad Mainul Hassan said that police would be placed on the highest alert at every Puja Mandap in the national capital to ensure that the Hindu community celebrate Durga Puja peacefully. Last month, the interim government's religious affairs advisor, AFM Khalid Hossein, warned though action against those disrupting communal harmony on or targeting places of worship during the Hindu festival. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.